we are going live from 180 degrees young earth and youth church. And as we now sanitize our hands, then let's put our hands together for prayer. Everlasting Father, we thank you. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the privilege to be called your own. Thank you for the grace to be called your own. Thank you, Lord, for calling us at a time such as this. Father, we say, may you alone be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we invite you into our midst today that as your word goes forth, as we dwell on your word, as we meditate together on your word, as it chew your word, Father, let boldness be released into our spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every form of fear that is ravaging our society. Father, as many as we hear your word today, let the spirit of boldness permeate into their minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of today, Lord, may only your name be exalted. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so I have the, myself, my name is Colade Lori, and I have Pastor Wills. <laughs> no, no, I'm just happy to be retired. Caleb Yes. And we certainly we are missing you guys because this is the first time we're doing something like this for Bible study, live streaming, Bible study, live streaming. And like someone is saying, that it's something that we should keep doing, keep doing, keep doing. And as much as the Almighty God gives us the grace, we will, we will try and reach those that either to have not been able to be coming, not been able to come for Bible study with the help of the Holy Spirit. So let's go into the main meal for, the, for today. We have been studying 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. And by the way, if you have any questions for us, Please, you can put it up there, and and we will do our best to work around answering with the help of the Holy Spirit. So we have been studying Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, and we are around verse eleven. Around verse eleven. If you have been coming for Bible study, you know when we say we are around because we realize you can't. The more you dwell on the word, the more the word does becomes more dynamic and more dynamic and more dynamic. So we'll just give you a quick recap of what we've been doing for, for the past Wednesday. So in Second Corinthians chapter 13, we see Paul coming, right, telling these people, writing a letter and telling them that this is the third time. That will be coming to them, and he was telling them that there are some things, that there are some things that these people have assumed. They've thought that since Paul always writes strong letters, strong letters, maybe Paul is not as you know his letter is more is more potent than his sight. When you see him, he looks all timid and everything. But when he's writing letters, he looks all bold, fiery, and everything. So Paul is telling them that, guys, don't let me come over there and don't let me exercise the authority that God has given me over you. So we have to understand that these people are people that Paul has brought to Christ. Paul has been nurturing over time. And like a father over a child, to a certain extent, he has authority over them. So Paul made them make these people understand that as much as I have this power, this authority in me over you, there is a power also within you that is at work within you. And in Bible study last time, we talked on how we can bring, we can utilize this power. What is this power in us? How as a believer, when you've given your life to Christ, you have this power within you. And why it is important for us as believers to exercise the power that is within us. And from there we went through Paul saying that these people, you need to test whether you are in the faith. You need to test whether you are in the faith. Are you in the faith? Don't you need to think that you yourself, you can ask yourself that question and identify what areas am I going wrong? 
how can I turn back? If I've faced a particular route, is it that route, um, is, it, is my destination still, does it still tally with where I planned when I started this Christian journey? And we looked at how, last, last class, we looked at how to test how to, te- how, to check or how, how to check and test whether you are still in the faith or not. So, we are not going to go back there and we just kick off from verse 11. Verse 11. But I don't know if you guys have maybe anything that you would like to chip in before we go into the, the main course. We have to follow the practice of the ingredients we have to test okay. if you are still in faith. Yeah. 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 So, I think, first of all, yeah, I'm sure they, I'm sure they can hear it. I think the Beatitude was part of what we um, spoke about and how to test. Uh, if I'm right, we went to Matthew 5 uh, because there was a relationship between mm-hmm. our mm-hmm. attitude, as described in the Beatitude, that the Matthew 5. And how it relates to testing if we are still in faith. I remember reading that um, part of um, Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, when we started from um, verse 3, it talks about um, being poor in the spirit, for this is the kingdom of God. Um, the speaker shared how our attitude, as described in the Beatitudes, can be a good. Um, test of whether we are still in faith or not. I think that our child is kind of relating the, the attitude to it, whether we are in faith or not. Yeah. So, I, as, as um, Caleb has said, we, we, the beatitude explain, also explains to us the character a believer should have. So, are you poor in spirit? Are you, are you easily led? Are, are, are you of a contrite spirit that when God is telling you that, my son, this is what you should do, are you yielding? So we look at the beatitude. Then we now went into what we said was the litmus. We said if just let me read, let me read that verse of the scripture to you. It's good to read the verse in the Bible. So verse five, Second Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse five. He says, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how Christ Jesus is in you, except ye be reprobate. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobate. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, that we should appear approved, but that we should, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobate. For we can do nothing against the truth or for the truth. Let's check that part in Amplify. Let's check Amplify. Amplify for the Israeli. When we do the normal Bible study, we just tell somebody, open Amplify for us. Yes. But now, guys, we have to open everything open ourselves. <laughs> okay, so, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. This, I want us to get a part there. Now, it says this. I will read verse 5 again in Amplify. Test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. So we understood that if you are in the faith, then there is a life you have to live. You cannot say you are in the faith and there is no life exuding out of you. So he's saying that examine yourself in the faith and see whether you are living this particular life. So we realize that when you talk faith, you talk life. So we talk about living faith. Faith is living. Our faith as believers is living. It's not dead. It's living. And we went to understand what are the attributes of a living thing. In school, those days, they taught us Mr. Ninja D. And M in Mr. stands for movement. And we said, to know whether you are in the faith, and whether your faith is living, to evaluate and to test yourself, the question is, is there movement? Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 says that we should go into the world. 
You cannot say you are in the faith and you have a problem moving for God. The Bible says, go ye. So, when you, when you test to check whether you are in the faith, there has to be movement to check whether your faith is living. Movement. Go ye into the world. How is what's your, at our, our at disposition to evangelizing? What's our at disposition to sharing and witnessing to people? It cannot be static. Because our faith has to be taken as living. The Bible says, seeking for the kingdom of God. Then we went to R. Just to give you a recap, we went to R. R talks about respiration. Respiration. And we understand that if we are in the faith, we need to have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because the spiritual leaders understand that there's a, there's a spirit in man. In Job 32, verse 8, there's a spirit in man and the inspiration, the breath of the Almighty. Give it to So there is a breathing that we do. And if you are not having a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you cannot take in the breath of the Almighty. The bread, the fellowship of the Spirit. We need it as believers to have faith, to walk in faith. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You need to breathe in the Holy Spirit. We talked about N, nutrition. You cannot say you are in the faith. To test whether you are in the faith. What is your disposition to feed in your spirit? Mm. What do you feast on? What do you dwell on? Are you dwelling on junk? You have to take the right nutrition to have the living faith. So, what kind of song is in your subconscious? Yeah, what kind of song is in your subconscious? You know, people, people ask the question that, but I can't avoid listening to these songs. I mean, I don't do it on purpose. I'm walking around. How do you think we can get around that? I'm walk, I'm, I'm going to walk. Um, I'm moving around, and yet, yes, the, people are playing these songs. They are entering into my spirit. How can I get around that? So, I think for me, what I've always said is, you cannot leave anything to chance. You can't leave anything to chance that, oh, I'm just, okay, let's probably start walking from here to a daughter, from here to a daughter. If you, are, if you have chosen to walk, that means you should have plugs. Because if you don't have plugs, as much as you are going, is there anything that they play that enters into you? Do you get what I mean? But if one way or another you have plugs, you have the sermon you are listening to, you have the white song you are listening to, or when you see someone, you say hi, you will return back to it again. Or when you get home, after doing your chores, or sometimes even at home when we are doing our chores, we are having music playing at the background. But you realize that some song that you don't really know, the moment that song keeps you playing, you play, you don't know where you know the lyrics. Because that is what is going into your subconscious. So what am I trying to say? Don't leave a chance to be void. You have to control the entire chances. Oh, you have 12 hours per day. But sometimes, if you go to bed with a song, you realize you wake up with it. So for me, that's where I feel you dictate what each hour I'll give to you. I think to also support that, um, the fact that something that they cannot be free. You know, everything in our Christian work is the work of faith. So. I might have struggles in my life that I'm going through now. And until I have faith to overcome them, even if I see a brother or a sister that overcomes them, there is tendency that I will still be held down by that particular that. thing. Mm-hmm. So to one thing that people that have been held down in not feeding their heart or their mind with the right thing is to know that there have been people that have passed through the same thing and God has brought them out of that. So if those people can come out of that, you can also be part of people that will make such testimonies. Okay, yeah, you say, ah, me, I can't do without this. I can't do with this song. I can't, but God deliver them. So sometimes, you know, our faith might not be able to carry the fact that we can't do something. But people also, in the book of Hebrews, you know, it was given an account of the whole map of faith. And it was given a, a whole list. Then it was talking about looking at them, you know. When we look at them, you know that they have achieved things in life. You know that we can also achieve things for God. So when you feel like you are struggling with some things, if you look at people that God has helped over, or believe that God has carried helped some people over it, there's tendency for you to also want to walk in that. That mountain doesn't simply surmount it with it. And you know, but a lot of people think that, so what happens if I don't dwell on God? What's, what's the implication to me, to my person? What are the pros and cons? What's, what's at stake exactly? What's at stake to I mean, hearing all these songs, all these jumps, what's actually at stake? Mm. Yeah. Oh, sure. yeah, what's at stake? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I used, I used to, like I said, I, 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 I put it this way. 
I said the reason why you choose or rather what precedes what is at stake is this. He said somebody that you should have faith that oh I can do without this song. I can I can live a, a nutritional Christian life without this kind of pollution, which is ah, it's possible, number one. Number two is that you realize something will play something. Do you have hunger for God? Because if you have an hunger, you know the Bible says in that Matthew 5 verse 6, it says, Blessed are those that task, I mean that, that, that are task after righteousness. Or blessed are those that are hungry and task after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yeah. So you realize that if you have an hunger to just want to consume more of God, one way or the other, there will be a, a, a love lost for that other part, which is the world. So what oh, is that transferring your hunger to another thing? Yes, yeah, so once you do that, then you now realize that anytime you are listening to that song, it draws you away from the person you are seeking relationship for, which is what is at stake. Which is what is at stake. Oh, you find him beautiful, oh, you cannot do without him. In fact, the way, the way some song even enters into your spirit and God takes you to another place, just through song, sometimes the minister is more to you. And you are able to comprehend how lovely, how amazing this relationship is. The moment Naramali pops in, the moment probably a new song that is trending, probably a lot this song, you know, their beats are always so nice, and if you are so carried away, you have so many slurs, and you keep repeating it, repeating it, before you know, it feels a timeline in your, in your spirit, man. Yeah. It feels a timeline, you know, probably a wit. So, one thing, so what is at stake now? Is, what is at stake is that God can speak to you in that kind of song. Mm-hmm. Is that song that we're speaking to you? Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you don't hear God. Yes, and, and, and so sorry to share. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I saw a movie today. So I walked from home. Are you serious? <laughs> and before you did, I went. I just went to Netflix. I said, okay, let me just to Netflix. Oh, okay, so let me get the whole story. Right. Fresh my year was the title of the movie. Um, it was about a pastor's son. It was a preacher's son. And he was going to college. He just went from high school. Father has brought him in the way of the Lord. And he entered college. And the first year of college, this guy that, want, that yeah, wanted to serve the Lord very well uh, impregnated him. I, I just saw the movie uh, today. Uh, impregnated the girl. Girl, probably 17 or so. And, you know, but what was at stake? What is at stake? We want to draw from that yeah. difference is that that guy has been brought up in the world. Of the world. And um, but the mistake he actually made was. His company. The friends are all Yes. Yeah. So they want company that encouraged him in the way of the Lord. They were companies that actually discouraged him in the way of the Lord. So listening to things that don't actually encourage the way of the Lord for us is just we trying to see if we can bypass what the scripture said in First Corinthians 15 verse 3. He says, people call communication corrupt good manners. So there is no two way to it. We can all relate to it in our life. Everywhere we are fall, everywhere we are fail, it's just because along the line, that type of communication has proliferated our heart and somehow, somehow that's corrupted whatever good manners we have. And you don't know where it enters. Yes, we do. I mean, it's so subtle. You are, I mean, when you listen to these corrupt songs, these vulgar songs, it doesn't show that it's, it's bad all of a sudden. Yeah, exactly, it doesn't. I mean, it's just gradual, it's corrupt. You just be in the kitchen washing plates. And you might not even be ordering <laughs> it. Your spirit is saying You mean it, it. yeah. yeah. You, know, right. you, know. You, you know, relating it to what's happening around, the more of the word of God you don't eat, in terms of a living faith, having the character, characteristic of nutrition, the more of the word of God you don't eat, the more fear. Grabs you. Yeah. Grabs your heart. Mm. And whatever is not of fear, whatever is of fear is not of God. The Bible says that we need faith, and faith can only come by hearing the word of God. So if you have been, if you are such that you don't, you, you don't, you think this Bible that is just what you realize one of character, one characteristic, one symptom, sorry, is that fear will erode your heart. Hey, uh, COVID-19, 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 what's going to happen to me? COVID-19, COVID-19. Uh, 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 you know, they, they actually checked, by the way, they actually checked the, the first time they brought around me. Yeah. And they said the name is COVID-19. 
He said the name is COVID-19. I mean, that's what they wrote on WHO, yeah. whatever. Yes, sir. But I think because it's here, 2019 or something, so they just said, but they wrote it exactly. They wrote one, yes, and they wrote in words. In yeah. words. Sorry. Yeah, they didn't write 19. Oh, really? In words, they wrote one, and they wrote nine. That's so, nice they if, if you are... If, if, if you have not been dwelling on the word of God, you just realize that you are afraid of what is happening around you. And we are going to go into that as we go on. Yeah, because there is so an area place. I want us to look at. So, we we'll look on. Mr. Ninja, I, I irritability. irritability. When you do something wrong, do you feel irritable? Or do you feel an, a, a shock in your heart? Or is your heart... Like they say, sick as it all time. Because you to check whether you are still in faith, you have to express irritability. Response to stimulus, as they say. Yeah. When something something when you do something wrong, what is the position of your heart? Do you kill it and say it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter, won't say forever saved. And you keep killing your conscience, killing your conscience up until the time you don't hear from God again. So a check is irritability. We go to G, Ninja, G. G is growth. You cannot say you have a living faith if you have not been expressing growth. Growth. And what do we mean? First Peter 2 says that we should desire, desire the sincere milk of the world, that we might grow. I mean, you know, I, I think we should pray for desire. Hmm. Yeah, because if that thing is there, it's just like, have you seen children who doesn't like food, and their parents are trying to feed them? Yeah. You realize that they compel them to take those food. Yeah. And either you like it or not, they are not going up to man. Because they will be stunted. They yeah. don't take the right food. So they parents will force them. But they don't like food. They don't like children like, like that. So you realize like desire is not there. So sincerely, we really need to pray for desire as Christians. Because what some minds desire is not even what benefit them. That desire is not like synonymous to that hunger. That's yeah. when you are hungry yeah. for God. Yeah. Blessed are those that hunger and trust after righteousness. You know, my brother, I realize that there is no part of the word of God you treat or you talk on that is not related to others. Witnesses. You know we learn about witnesses. Yeah. You can, you can start talking about prosperity now. It's related to holiness. Yeah. Talk about holiness. It's related to the Holy Spirit. Talk Bible about Holy Bible Spirit. Bible Spirit. Bible it's related to faith. So you can't separate and isolate the word of God on its own. So we're talking about growth now and we're still relating it to nutrition. Yes, sir. And because if you, and you know, as you said, why growing up they force us to take some food? We don't want it. And I realize, yes, it's good for us. I realize that's why the church has structure. That's why we have Bible study. Sometimes you don't want to go for Bible study, but sometimes like, just go, just go. Eh, am I the one that killed Jesus? What, can't I do without Bible study? Can't I do without fellowship? Yes, you can do without them. But the advantage essential is essential for your growth, or else you'll be stunted. You'll be stunted. So the church has put structure in there so that people that find it difficult to grow just by following this structure can. At least if you are able to follow it, you, you, the chances are high yeah. that you will not remain as you can. Until you can, you're able to stand by yourself. And they don't need to drive you by the law again, the spirit. You are driven by the spirit, by the way. So we move on. We, went, we go to expression. Yeah, we got to expression. Now we say expression. Yeah, this is the byproduct of it. When a, something is living, when you have a living faith, like when a man is living, it goes with toilet. And what are the byproduct that comes out of a living faith? The Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and and His righteousness, and all other things shall be added to you." In Matthew six verse thirty three. All other things shall be added. These are additions. They are like byproducts of faith. They are not things that we should focus on. Now, just let's see so how we can go into today's. We went to. We are still talking about the last class. Yeah, um, yes. yeah, we are still talking about the last class. But now you can check and evaluate whether you are still in the faith. We went to reproduction. I'm telling you. Yeah, sorry, sorry. sorry. You know when we are talking about that expression, expression. Yeah. Aside seeing the blessings as a byproduct. What have you expected since you, or what have you been expecting since you became a believer and you are undergoing growth? When I mean, what have you been expecting? Oh, I used to be very, very cantankerous before. I can't control anger. I can't, once I'm just angry, everybody should just leave me. I'm on fire at that time. Oh, probably all your, all your gossips, or probably even lies. As we, 
do away with all those things. You know, sometimes when I told someone, I was like, you know, when you got married, when I got married, something that you just feel that you are bossy over, you can't leave this thing. Marriage has one good me. You just come to understand that, see, it's not about this person what it's like, right. so that's why I have to be right. The person can get it wrong, then you still have to do what is right. So you learn it. And I'll just be like, yeah, 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 yeah. So you're still peace with all men. I'll say, what is it? For still peace with all men. And it's coming out of you. What is, what is that thing yeah. uh, shedding off? Yeah. And we also talk about reproduction. Ninja, reproduction. A sign of you having a living feet, evaluating whether you're still in the feet, is reproduction. What are you reproducing? That was a going to and make disciples. Those around you, would they like to pattern their lives after you? You know, how many disciples have we been making as children of God? How many fruits have we been bearing? The Bible says that if you don't bear fruit, a tree that does not bear fruit is fit for the fire. Cut it down. Cut it down, the Bible says. The word of God says, cut it down. So we must bear fruit as believers. This is a sign that we are having a living faith. It's a sign that we are in the faith. We must be careful. And we said the last one, based on, you know, before I said the last one, I remember someone said during the last Bible story that uh, living faith, uh, living faith now, now is no more, no more Mr. Nejadi. There's yeah. now A and C. Yeah. We are not familiar with that now. Adaptation. Uh, adaptation and, and cognitive. And cognitive. I don't know. When we were in school there, so they thought of Mr. Nejadi. So, pardon us if you are, if you are not with your syllabus. Yeah, yeah. And I think. <laughs> so, we, we don't about death. Death. One of the signs of a thing living is that it dies to some things. What have you been dying to? The Bible says, mortify, mortify, mortify your, your the, the members, mortify your mortal members. You cannot say you are. Living in faith, you cannot say that you are evaluating your faith and you are okay. You have not been dying to some things. Every day we die to things. Hey, I'm 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 usually angry. It's my nature. You have to live with me. No, it has to die. What is it in your life that has to die? The Bible says it must die. We see for Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 13. He said that we should offer ourselves as living sacrifices, only an acceptable to God. So we must die. So, Reverend, that's just a recap of the last Bible study so we had. These are things that we can use to evaluate if we are still in faith. Mm. Exactly. And if we are not undergoing all this. And the extra syllable was adaptation and competitiveness. Yeah. Competitiveness. <laughs> you know, I. I Looking at that, I realize that when you're working with the Spirit, the Bible says something. It's, it, 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 it says that, like the wind blew it. I don't know where, where, I, where I come from, where I go. So are those. So are those. So are the ways of those that are led by the Spirit. Yeah, those that are led by the Spirit. So you realize that when you are led by the Spirit, people leg. cannot please you. Set your leg. You begin to adapt to different things. Yeah. You know. Like those school girls looking at your head and asking you to start praying. I'm like, no, no, no. I usually don't pray. I usually don't pray. Rest is very deep. Well, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to invest into something that doesn't look ideal. Something that looks crazy. That by all data, by all stats, people will say, no, 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 no. Get off it. Do you know that you cannot say that you have been working with in the spirit without having surprises? We cannot comprehend this God. This God created over 6 billion human beings. He created diverse beings. And he said in his word that I'm created man after my image. So you can imagine how diverse God is. We are even, I'm even trying to understand Wally. Not enough of other billions. Of, now you can imagine trying to understand God. God is so diverse. And if you are walking in the spirit, you are always surprised. So I understand when you listen to elders in faith, they will tell you the more you know about God, the less you know. Yes, you know. And that's the thing about God. So you must be willing to be adaptable. Yield to the Spirit. And you say, yield to the Spirit. Uh, yeah, competitive, yeah. Look at objective. It's more like desiring to be more of God. Competitive is not okay. So um, 
let's raise it to faith now. It's not um, so this one thousand and out of out of spite, I have to do two thousand naira. You can't. That is not acceptable to God. You know, if you're competing with that, that heavy competition, you can see someone growing in faith and you be like, I don't, oh, I don't want, I don't want to stay at that. I don't want to stay at this level. Also. I want to I go higher. Convert endlessly. Yes. Convert endlessly. That competitiveness coming. Yeah. So, and it makes us better if it's done elderly as led by the Spirit. It encourages us. It's done elderly. I mean, while we come and while we say, Oh, the Spirit of the Lord says this, and you are like, Oh, I want to hear from God too. Mm. It's it's Bring something new. Yes, it can happen. This pastor, the boy, every time I'm saying, God says the Lord. Hey, you, you start by saying, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every time he says, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My father said, How? That is the only thing. Me too, I want to, I want to hear, I want to have the voice of knowledge. I want to have the voice of wisdom. So it brings, it brings an hunger in you. Going back to hunger, nutrition. It brings an hunger in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are told, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Job into today. You know, we are we, we, we dwelling on the last. The Bible is just sweet, sweet. You know, interesting, dynamic. It has a word for every season. So we go into the word for today. Open your Bibles with us to Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me start reading from verse 9. We are glad. Let me do KJV. Strong KJV. <laughs> strong KJV. Verse 9. It says, For we are glad when we are weak and yet strong. And this is also we, this also we wish, even your perfection. So Paul was saying here that we have been laboring and striving for you. It seems as if we are diminishing, but we are glad that you have been empowered. You see people, our, our, our fathers in faith, laboring, trying to get something across us. They are always going, preaching, trying to teach. Whereas we just feel they wake up in the night praying for us. So when they see that we two are growing, they are glad. Because they give them joy. So Paul is saying that this thing gives me joy for me to be spent for you. Verse 10. Therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord has given me to edification and not to destroy. So Paul is not saying that he wants to rule over these people. No. He's telling them that, you know, as believers, we must submit ourselves to authority. How easily do you take to correction? When you are growing in the spirit, you have to be careful of this. Because you can fall into the trap of Miriam and Aaron. When they face Moses, and they say, Moses, it's only you that the Lord speaks to. It's like saying, it's like saying that Pastor Tosin, our, that's our pastor by the way. Pastor Tosin, it's only you that the Lord speaks to. God gave me to a word now. Why don't you give me a platform to preach? I didn't, you know. So we must subject ourselves to correction. So Paul is telling them there that God has given me the authority to correct people. So be careful. I don't want to come there and be correcting you. Change, he's telling them. So we now go to verse 11. Which is a meal cause for today. You know, you know, God is trying to tell them that let my letter bring results in you instead of my presence compelling the results. Mm -hmm. so that look, look correct. Let the letter that I write to you, yeah. let it bring this desired result in you. Rather yeah. than waiting for me until I come mm -hmm. and exercise power yes. and exercise authority before I get this clear yeah. result. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just like, so. When people hear the word of God, like they keep saying, ah, no, Jesus has been coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Oh, all these things people are right saying, today we have issues with tithes, tomorrow we have issues with giving, today we have issues with being led by the Spirit. And, and like the Bible says in that um, story of Abraham and Lazarus, he said, ah, he said, no, let, let them send, he said, let me go back. So that as we should send people to them that if they see this prophet, he said they have been sending to them already, they are not listening. You going will not make a difference. So how much do we give to the world? Are we waiting until we see God using crisis to talk to us? Because the Bible says in the book of Luke 15, I mean the story of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he asked his father his own lot, and he traveled to a far country and he spent living in my life. The Bible says, and at a certain time there was farming in the land. 
that no man who had food to give unto him, and he fed on the husk of the pig. If there was not that family, that scripture that they said that, and he came to his senses, that prodigal son would have been lost forever. If that family did not come, if God did not restrict men to give up to him, not to help him, to the extent that he had to come to his senses that I am living even below mediocrity. Say, even the worst servant in my father's house has food to eat. So, do God now bring circumstances like this to him? Because ordinary the world cannot bring results in you, which is supposed to. How often do we give it to this world? This world, they are talking about this world, this world, this world. This world. God is speaking to us every day. Yeah. He's speaking to us every day and he's using everything around to talk to us. You know, God is talking to us through this coronavirus. If you look at this coronavirus and the way it is said to affect people, you think of sin. You realize that you are careful now because of coronavirus, social distance, don't expose yourself to some things. And that's basically what we talk about sin. That you should not expose yourself to some things. Mm. You should live in the sanctity of the world. Mm. You know, you are you're, you're saying that cover your mouth, cover your mouth. Don't let the world trances come out from you. You know, don't, 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 don't fellowship with the wrong set of people. Because when you fellowship with the wrong set of people, they are going to corrupt you. It's like coronavirus. You are, they are going to transfer it to you. You will not even know that you have it. Later, you are going to be seeing the symptoms. So and, the, and the Bible says that sin, when it's fully matured, so, comes to death. Sin, the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. When the symptoms, you don't know that when you are mingling with the wrong set of people, you are mingling with the wrong things, you are hearing the wrong things. Sorry, you don't know how that this virus has entered into you. Over time, you will not see it. The first week, you are okay. Then you begin to see the symptoms. Then you, you begin to tell yourself, no, no, it's not because of that. It's just malaria. It's just this. Because, but you don't know it's coronavirus. Then, after two weeks, the symptoms are fully blown. Then you start running for, for help and everything. And if you are not in the place where you can have the immunity of God, where they can bring you and bring you out of, uh, they, they can feed your immune system with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. They can feed your immune system with the word of God. Your immune system becomes weak. And the Bible says that sin, the way of sin is dead. When sin is fully matured, death comes. So God talks to us through everything. God is talking to you through coronavirus. He's telling you that don't, don't go on sinning. When we face him that day, you say, God, I don't understand. I didn't know I should not, I should not relate to these people. God will tell you, you need to express coronavirus. But we don't sense how God is talking to us. I said, we want to see some pain. Yeah, quite six. Yeah. So uh, I think, while speaking, I just got uh, an insight. I tried to ask myself today on why Paul was writing all this today. And I think it also makes sense to all of you. I tried to relate things to my own life. I, I think like every believer, at some point, we always struggle to, to have, like, like we are two. There is, is, a part of us when people are there, mm. and there's another part where no one is looking. I think if there is one thing that summed up what Paul was trying to tell these people is that be the same person whether someone is there or not. Every one of us struggle with that. You know, we want to be, you know, want to present ourselves so good and a Christian. You know, I struggle with that too. On WhatsApp but, story, a preacher. Exactly. So, in so, your in, in, in the corner of your house, you have something else. something else. Or your, you dressing, or your dressing pattern does not even fit into your WhatsApp story as a preacher. Do you get? Do you get? So, you're just asking yourself some questions. And, and I know what he was actually calling this people to this Corinthian job is more of growth. Come in to this. Don't wait question. till Paul has come to you, till uh, Peter has come to you. Yeah. You know, and we all struggle with that as like Christian. You know, nobody sees you and everything. And you can choose to do whatever it is you like. Yeah. We take the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God mm -hmm. to just keep right whether anybody is there or no one is there. And that's why he's telling them, don't let, don't let it be on don't let you physically come. Harsh words. What is your disposition to the word you are hearing? I'm sending letters to you. I'm sending the word to you. Don't wait for a presence to manifest himself to you yeah. in a dream. The presence is what you mean. Yeah. Don't wait for a presence to, to manifest himself. The word of God is there. The letters are there sent to you. You are hearing the word of God now. Don't wait for God to reveal, it, to reveal himself to you in a dream as one airy figure before you correct your ways. I think this, 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 this 
topic has built a lot of prayer points. He built a lot of prayer points in the world. What we should pray about in this season, more especially in our lives. That's why there are a lot of things in me that I feel these are the things I need to be praying to God for now in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, if you have questions at home, please put it on the, on the, is it the wall, the call it Yeah, put it on the comment section. Yeah, and we'll, we'll try and lay our hands on it. So, let's go on. Second Corinthians we have, Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 11. Finally, 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 brethren, you know, when you're reading the Bible, it's good to follow the portrait of Mars, the commas and everything. You kind of get a sense of exactly how the guy was talking. Finally, brethren, farewell. You know what Amplify says? He says, finally, brethren, rejoice. Interesting. So, of hope. Let me just finish the whole verse before I come to that. You know, that thing is packed with a lot of cheese. Finally, brethren, let me read up fine. Finally, believers, rejoice! Exclamation mark. As if you are shouting. Rejoice! Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be made complete. Jacob said, perfected. Be made complete. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being. Explain what it means to live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. You are not afraid. There is no fear within you. If you are watching this and you are afraid of what is happening around you, then there is a problem. There's a problem. Not your master himself in love. In the Perfect love cast out yeah. fear. And we are coming to that. So he says that, and the God of love and peace. Let, let me go back. You know, we are, I, I'm just I'm just feeling the spirit moving in me. I can feel the tumbling, the you know, the whistling of the spirit. So there are a lot of things to say. Let's go to the beginning. Finally. Believers, farewell. Rejoice. Does this thing make sense? Do you know that in, in my age, I didn't realize that farewell means rejoice. I, I, I related farewell to when somebody dies. Farewell, farewell, we will see you someday. I, I, think I related farewell to when somebody dies. But I went to check the dictionary to see what farewell means. Do you know farewell is synonymous with throwing a farewell party? Like somebody is living in your place of work, you organize a party, everybody is singing. You know, farewell means you are building somebody well based on where the person is going. So it's an atmosphere of joy. But somehow, somehow the devil has got us to think farewell, especially when somebody dies. That farewell means you are sad. As a believer, you are not to be sad when another believer goes home. You are not afraid of death. The Bible said, death, where is your, where, where, where is your sin? Great, where is your victory? If I get it right, let me just confirm that. You know, the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Yes. He says, oh, death, where is your sin? Oh, great, where is your victory? He says, the sting of death is sin. Why you are afraid of dying is because you don't know your place in Christ. Because if you know your place in Christ, you understand that Christ has won the victory for you. You understand that death is not an end. Death is a beginning. So you don't see it as death the way men see it as death. You see it as the start of a new chapter. Yesterday, I died and I woke up today. Glory be to God. Thank God for a new morning. You say, you wake up in the morning and say, Father, thank you for a new morning. Because yesterday I was dead to the world. I didn't know what was going around me. But today I'm awake. Glory be to God. Death is the beginning of a new thing. Why are we afraid of death as believers? Why? Why are we afraid of death? Is it not a good thing? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be for you. Yeah. I, I think I 
I don't want to generalize it. I, I think it's a personal experience because um, Paul was not saying, was not saying for we to die. No, it was specific there. It's a personal experience. He can call it gay because he has gotten to that level. Yeah. And that's very, very important. He has come to that understanding, understanding. Yeah. that he knows that actually death is not actually um, something I am afraid of. It's actually something I wish can come now so that I can be in glory with Jesus. You know, it's a level he has entered. Do you know that the devil cheats us out of the blessings that God has for us by instilling fear in us. Death. And death brings fear. When you're afraid of death, I'm like, it's fear. It's fear. You're afraid of dying. It's fear. So the devil, you know, you find it interesting when God was telling Joshua, when he commissioned Joshua, he said, don't be afraid. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. I've given you these people. God has given you a lot of things. But you hinder yourself because you are afraid. You are afraid of dying to some things. You are afraid of taking some steps. You are afraid. And death epitomizes fear. You are afraid of dying. And because we are afraid of dying, our work doing things for the kingdom of God is hindered. And no, I don't want to die. This, I am telling you, this avenue where we have a lot of people around is an avenue to propagate the gospel. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an avenue when you're able to reach those people you, you've not been able to communicate with all this while. To, to, we can't have physical gatherings as we know it again in this part of the country. But it doesn't stop you from stepping out. On Sunday, the evangelism team, you, back, you went out to preach. I can preach from, to you from a social distance. <laughs> and then, my brother, receive Jesus into your life. You have to go, you must not be afraid of death. When you are afraid, there is something wrong. On the line, fear means something is wrong in a believer. Fear means something is wrong. So ask yourself this question, what am I afraid of? Then you know what is wrong. You need to correct it. Perfect love, cast out fear. So fear well, rejoice. Now, something else about rejoice. You know, um, a man of God said, you can never get a sad Holy Ghost. Paul is saying here, that there are some things I don't know what you are going through. He said, but believers, rejoice. And all mark of a believer is joy. Hallelujah. Amen. And all mark of a believer is joy. You are not down. People are giving different estimates of people that have, that have died, and you are rejoicing. They look at you and they say, are you happy that people are there? You say, no, I'm not happy. A lot of souls have been lost. You know, I'm, I'm not happy, but I am joyful. Because I know that my God gets me. The hallmark of a believer is joy. Paul is saying that finally, believers rejoice. What is that situation that we are going through that is still our joy? When the devil wants to get us, he gets our joy. Mm, yes. When the devil has been able to, when the devil is able to get your joy, then the devil, man, he got you in the palm of his hands, man. So you must. Against all odds, secure your joy. In the school, don't lose, it. Don't lose your joy. Don't, no matter what is going on around you, if you have not lost your joy, then you are okay. If you have lost your joy, something is wrong. Because when you are joyful, you cannot be afraid. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When you are joyful, you cannot be afraid. When you are not joyful, fear comes in. It encroaches. It works. It can't work. It sneaks. It sneaks into your life. Before you know it, you go from a state of, well, I'm, just, I'm not joyful. Before you know it, you go, like, I don't care. Before you know it, you go, like, oh, I don't know. Before you know it, you go from a state of, hey, I'm afraid of what's that. Before you know it, you go into depression. From depression, you think of suicide. But you can never think of suicide if you are joyful. And I'm not talking about what's up joy. People, you know, we live a fake life nowadays. What's up joy? Fonts. Yeah, fonts. What's up joy is fonts. Right, um, um, you, you put it, hey, I'm, I'm bubbling, I'm bubbling. And as I'm writing, I'm bubbling. You are like this. Mm. But there's your, no excitement. To there's no excitement. The, 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 the words on what I'm talking is saying, bubbling. You put your emoticon. That just, you know, but you are like morose. You are lonely. 
Joy lost them. Yeah, so that's fake. That's, that's fake. Not correct. That's fake. Joy does not come from without. It comes from within. And that's why the Bible says that righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Peace in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. This is the kingdom of God. You know you have the kingdom of God within you when you are in a state of joy. State of righteousness. State of peace. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, I realized something. When you are down, think like God. When you are down, have the thoughts of God. You are down because you don't have the thoughts of God. How do you have the thought of God? The word of God. Do you know that you think like God when you think the word? You must have the thought of God. Begin to think the thought of God. The moment you think the thought of uh, 50 people have been selected, have been, have been uh, are in quarantine. This and that, before you know you are afraid of whatsoever. Now it's, precaution is good. But you are not taking precaution out of fear. You are taking precaution because you are trying to obey all, um, how do they say? Yes, um, there's a word we use. Um, follow righteousness. Yes, you are trying to follow righteousness. So that you are, you are, not, being, you are not in a state of carelessness. You are not a victim by carelessness. Carelessness. You are trying to say, Father, I'm doing my part. But <laughs> this part. What the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 16. Yeah. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That the Spirit of the Lord dwelleth inside. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know what that means? Yeah. 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 How are some delegates? How are some delegates? You might be living in the understanding that you don't know. We are going to live here. You know, you say, Oh, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit of the Lord. He said, No, sure. That means you are not the Don't you know? So it is possible not to know. He says, um, you can 
you can lose the battle, but not the war. The battle is just a phase of the war, if I'm right. The battle is like, oh, battle one, battle two, battle three. But the war is everything, all the battles yeah, yeah. combined. You can lose a battle, but it's just like a chess piece. You say, oh, I'm going to destroy you, but take this pawn, chop it. The guy chop it, at, at the pawn, talk, oh, I'm beating you. Nah, you're not beating anything. I got you right where I want you. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is so Yeah. But just, God was not surprised. What was not like, hey, I have died, yo. Oh, Adam and Eve, they have messed up. Oh, no. Ah. He just went to them calmly and said, Adam, where are you? Don't fear! You can help me. You can help me. You can help me. You can So, you know, you know that, that, that thing that God was not, God, God was still rejoicing. Even in that situation, he knew that Jesus was coming. Mm. He knew that, okay, so the devil thought that he's wise now. Yeah, you know, yeah. Adam and Eve has messed up. Yeah. And everything is going to be the end. Yeah. You know, that was what Paul was describing in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8. Mm. He said, which none of the princes of this world knew. For I then know you would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, God was not rattled when the devil seemed as if he had gotten out his plan. When he seemed as if he had, you know, you know what it takes to make someone in your own likeness and that person has gone south. Hallelujah. I think all of us can go through that experience. Imagine today you have a woman has cooked all day in the kitchen, she has been a still. And she was just about to. This is the and, the and the host still just falls down. Delicious still. Can you imagine the mentality of that woman at that time? She has spent hours cooking. I'm pretty sure she just, she got she, ideally, I think it had happened to my mom before. She didn't want to touch that thing. You don't even clean it. She just cooking like this. Yes. He said, she said, she will live, right? <laughs> Which work of devil is this? You know, God was not saying that when, when he see my sin. Uh, the devil threw his plan south in the other man. God is not afraid. You know, another thing we want us to say is that people like God is. We can reason the state God is now as there is a crisis that is trying to help you look the world. Yeah. Is God in crisis? No. Is God afraid? And you say you God God God. And you say God is living in you. Yeah. So why are you afraid? No, it's, 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 there's no God in us. If we are afraid of all these things that is happening around us, we need to get that. Do you know? So if if what you want is if if hearing all this is putting putting so much faith into you about the coronavirus, that means you need to do more to hear of God than hearing about coronavirus. You know, Jesus said the same thing. He said well, when he was telling you things that will happen before the end. Yeah. He said, but don't don't be afraid. Mm. Rejoice. Yes. Don't be afraid. Rejoice. Rejoice. That don't, that don't be afraid. Yeah. Do rejoice. rejoice. Don't be afraid. So why are you afraid? You call yourself a believer. Are you are telling a believer. I don't know what a believer means. A believer means to believe. So what do you believe? Uh, you know, sometimes uh, when people tell me because Christianity, Christian, the Christian, Christian, you think of religion. You know what I tell you? I said I'm a believer because you have to understand that my Christianity is a lifestyle. I believe before I see. I believe because I saw something spiritually before physical, before the physical. So I believe before I physically see anything. I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith, and that's what a believer is. So you are afraid of what's happening around you. So are you a believer? I mean, you will be able to answer that question by the time you check your instead of your faith level or your fear level. Are you a believer? You know, we've we've talked about we've worked on some of the things that are ahead in this in this verse. He says, finally, believer, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be perfect. Be what you should be. Do you know who is in you? Be what you be. He says, be comf comforted. Be like-minded. We talk about the thoughts of God. Look, we are three here. Do you know why we can be discussing in this book and be moving towards the same mind? Because we have a guide. We have a mind that all of us are conforming to. Yeah. So who, has, who knows the mind of God like I can't tell you? But we have the mind of Christ. That's what the scripture says. He said we have the mind of Christ. So we can only be one-minded when we are thinking like Christ. Leave, if I leave you to yourself, you leave me to myself, our thoughts will be different. Based on the circumstance around us. But right now, all of, I mean, we are on the same page. We are on the same page right now because whatever we are saying, when I say something, it triggers something in you. You explain what I, it triggers something in you. Because we are like minded, we are thinking the thoughts of God. You cannot be one minded if you are not thinking the thoughts of God. 
let me tell you what happens when you begin to think the thoughts of God. The quality of your life changes. The, your life, the quality of your life improves. You begin to have less wrinkles. <laughs> I'm telling you, you begin to you begin to care less of what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink. You begin to care less of hey, what the corona do. Because you are one with God. You know what the scripture says? He said, he that is joined to the Lord, he, he, he that is of, he joined to the Lord is of one spirit with him. We are one minded. We know the mind of Christ. And what you said now, someone might look at it and say, what the rest is this brother saying now? That you don't have wrinkles, you don't have. It's in the scriptures. If you remember Daniel, yeah. They were not eating the king's meat. The king's meat. They were not eating the precious food. Yeah. The, 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 the king guy that was put in their charge was even afraid that if you eat these beans and whatever it is and other what you're asking for, your face will look like they are not taking care of you. Yeah. He said, okay, just, just give it to us. Days later, when they brought them out, their face was fresher mm. than those that are feeling oh, yeah. on the kitchen. Yeah. That's a thought that is in God. Yes. And, you know, sometimes the Bible does not explain everything. Like, for example, you hear a story in the Bible, in a chapter, but in another book, they explain what happened behind. We, I, Daniel was not walking by sight. Yes. Daniel was somebody that understood the mind of God. So when he told them that I'm not going to eat this food, he was not doing mini mini anymore. He was not trying to form Christianity. No. He was walking with divine direction because he knows the mind of God. You can know the mind of God for your, for, for your tomorrow. You can know the mind of God for your tonight. All you have to do is begin to think the thoughts of God. How do you think the thoughts of God, thoughts of God again? You've had it all this while. You don't know the power it has. God begins to tell you, when people are running out of scatter, God begins to tell you you should be at peace. He will, he will be talking to you not because anybody said anything. He'll be talking to you from his own mouth. Talking to you from the, in quotes, from the horse's mouth. <laughs> God is not your horse, but yes, I I, <laughs> you know, he'll be talking to you from the horse. Yeah, you're fresh. Yeah, you're hearing fresh. So, he begins to tell you with what Pastor Jehovah said. He begins to tell you all these people are saying. Then you cannot, it, it, now it's what we erode fear in you. No, let's move on because there are some stuff in here that are talking about all those things. He said, be of good comfort. Don't be disturbed by what is happening around. When you are disturbed, it's a sign that you don't know God. You don't know your God. Because those that know their God, they shall be strong. He said, be of good comfort. Be of one mind. He said, live in peace. He talked about living in peace. When you begin to think the thoughts of God, you have peace, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. When you begin to think the thought of God, you are not bothered about anything. All things begin to work together for your good. People will ask you, what? Do you know? You know, now that we are, we are doing live streaming, yeah, so it's not everything you can say. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't know who is who, 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 who. If, if, if there's no live streaming now, there are a lot of things I wanted to share. Yeah, you know, know are. Personal examples, you know. They are, they are just, but because we are live streaming, I don't understand. Yeah, I understand. I understand why they our uh, fathers. Yes, why they don't share some song. I understand why Adewale said, well, when God told him that everybody would be on compulsory holiday, that he couldn't say anything. I mean, there are some things that you, you, you can't just share like that because you are like, okay, is this for personal consumption? So when it happens, you now say, okay, I can share. This has happened. Let me share. Yeah. So, do you know peace in your life? Begin to think the thoughts of God. It brings me. The quality of your life begin to change. Your faith life begin. Everything you are looking for, that money you are looking for, it comes as a byproduct. Because you need to be in a state of peace to make money. Mm. Or else that money will rob you of peace. You know, the Bible, the Bible says something. He said, God, um, God is one that gives and I add no sorrow to it. The blessing of the Lord, you make it rich and I add no sorrow. It puts you in perfect peace. Ah! I hope that's something. Oh, Father, we pray, oh Lord, as many that are troubled right now. Father, you are the Prince of Peace, Jesus. Let your peace extend today right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. We cast out the spirit of fear right now out of our midst. 
We receive the spirit of boldness, Amen. the spirit of love, Amen. and of a sound mind. He said, uh, I'm talking about every, all these things are just intertwined. He said, You have good comfort, verse 11. You have one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. What happens when the God of peace and love is with you? What happens? What do you think happens? So, what he's trying to say is that the God whom you are serving is not just a powerful God. Oh, but not only you know him with the mind of the battle the Red Sea. Also, also. He said that you should have to your dictionary or to your experience there is a God that expresses love. Expresses love that you cannot explain. And is also a God that gives peace. He is peace custodian. The other place to have been explained as and the God of love and the God of peace shall be with you. It's two in one, they're telling you. So add it to it that in these times, in these seasons, where there is distress, where there is crisis, that you are working with a God that peace cannot be separated from you. That's why he, he speaks to storm. He doesn't want turmoil. You can't say you have God and you have peace. Storm, man. He can't <laughs> shake him. <laughs> you, know, you know, they say something about the eagle. In, uh, Nestle, they said, when the eagle sees the storm, while other birds are running in the basket, the eagle has courage. The storm is ravaging all around our society. Do you have courage? Then it speaks to whether you are an eagle or a chicken. Can grow up, <laughs> or we can grow up. It's all about the storm. People don't understand why what is happening around is not affecting you. In the place of calamity, you will be enjoying bountifulness because you are above the storm. They say when the, the eagle sees the storm, they rise up. You, you know they tell us these things, but you know, I tell on National Geographic, I've not seen this in life. You know, but we hear the eagle screech. That one is definitely. You see, when the storm comes, that the eagles, when they rain about the fall, you begin to hear the cry of the eagle. That's why the Bible is saying, finally, believers, rejoice! The eagle screeches. It's like, I'm not afraid of you. You only shout at what you're not afraid of. Right now, if you are wondering why we are speaking in tongues, and you desire it, the Holy Spirit comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. By your faith, you are made over. Rejoice! The Eagle at the sight of a storm rejoices. He doesn't cower like a chicken running with it. He rejoices. And there is peace. You can't say you have God when you don't have peace. I mean, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Do you know what the Prince of Peace means? Why when they say Jesus is the Prince of Peace? Prince there does not mean the child of a king in that sense. It means the authority. The ruler. The, ruler, the authority of peace. So when you see somebody is a prince of Persia, he's the ruler of Persia. So prince of peace is the one, is the custodian of peace. So when you have Jesus, you have peace. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the place of peace. Brethren, our dad in the Lord and the has spoken to us. He said that, my, if you are my children, no, and you have been following my instruction, no. Guys, people are shouting all around, this is where you should be eating. Because you should express peace. Mm. Now understand what is happening, the pandemic that is happening around us. We need to exercise our authority to get this pandemic out. Right? But we are not afraid. We are like the children of Israel that went towards the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho was that strong, was that big, was that mighty, and they kept marching around it. Every day they blow trumpets, rejoicing. And on the seventh day they begin to shout, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! They shout the seventh day and the wall came crumbling down. They exercised their authority. Before then, God said, Go, I have given it into your hand. 
They were in a peaceful state. It doesn't make any sense to think that shouting will bring down a wall as thick. My brother, my brother, you know, that is the first technology called sonic bomb. Yes. They are trying to create it now. I mean, yes. we see the movies, but that was the first sonic bomb. Because after <laughs> shout of the people, the work of Jericho was quite thick. It said chariots, seven or one on them. them. Chariots, right. rise on them. And not even ride on them. It said, Do you know what the chariots, I mean, it was thicker than Tommy Lambrick, that's it. Yeah, how many ways is what I'm talking about? thickness of yeah. it. A lane of top of that's a thickness of How can a wall actually fall in that? That is what we with lots of time. So this is things that does not make sense. Do you know, in, 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 in my family, we were reading that place, and we realized this. Do you know Rehab House was on the wall? Yes. Do you know Rehab the wall came tumbling down? And Rehab was safe. How come that part? That part crumble. they crumbled up. You know what my wife said? My wife said, and I believe it was the only spirit that came out of her understanding. Flesh and blood has not revealed it. Flesh and blood didn't reveal it to her. She said, he told Rehab that hang the scarlet clothes. The blood. Around that candle. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the blood was holding it up. Why the guys are coming? Why the pestilence is ravaging those around you? The blood is holding you up. Amen. Why coronavirus is ravaging those around you? The blood is holding you up. Amen. The blood is holding us up. Amen. But that is if you are a believer. If you have not given your life to Christ, brethren, please don't wait for us to get to the end, end of this of, of this discussion. Just talk, talk to the Almighty God right now. Say, Father, I come to you. Forgive me. I'm a prodigal son. But I realize I cannot escape this pestilence if I'm not under your wings. I cannot ex escape this pestilence if I'm, I'm not under your shadow. I come to you, Lord Jesus. Please forgive me of all my sins. I repent. I come to you. Please receive me. Because your word says, those that come to you, you shall indeed in those no wise, wise cast out. Or cast away. Now I believe I'm yours. Then we can now begin to talk on the same yeah. So you can say what we say. Hallelujah. And to say that God has actually communicated the things that are happening now to us would be a blank at life, even here. Because if you remember very well, there was a particular Sunday that God was speaking expressly you to us. So and one of God, I said to my wife, we were discussing it at too. My brother, I don't go to that. that. <laughs> <laughs>
Believers, <laughs> believers lose the holiday, and they say we should kiss each other now. So we have to be kissing. Me and my girl. No, that's not what it means. Understand that it's a tradition for these people to do mwa, mwa. And that's why uh, coronavirus is easy to transfer. <laughs> <laughs> if coronavirus can be transferred by action, that's for kissing. Mwa. You know, this Arabian fluid, this Arabian way of breathing. But that's what it means. Greet each other. Embrace each other in our culture. In the Yoruba culture, if Paul was a Yoruba man, you would say, the valley for Galaga. Or you know, post race, you know, how to each other, you know, that's what it means. But yes, let's go to the, this this particular. It's talking about love. Love each other. Love each other. We need to love. Love. Do you know what is interesting about love? Love is a weapon. Love is a double-edged sword. The Bible says that even when your enemy, and I'm not meaning the devil, I'm not meaning I mean human enemy. When they do something wrong, he said, repay them with love. He said, when you do it, you are heaping all scores on their head. Love is a weapon that you cannot defend against. It's a double-edged sword. So you can if you are a martial artist, you understand what I'm saying. You know, sword has one edge, blocks. So I doesn't cut the person wielding it. So you can do. But with love, whether you touch it here or touch it here, it will cut you. It's a weapon. And the Bible says these things endures love, faith. Well, what's the third one again? He said, but the greatest of these is love. Hope, hope, hope. Yes. Love, faith, and hope. Faith is very powerful. The Bible says without faith, nobody can see God. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. But the whole about we do that is not of faith, it's sin. Faith is not powerful. The Bible talks about the faith, the shield of faith. Faith is not powerful. But the Bible says the greatest is. Why want to deal with somebody? Love. Because when you love, you take the battle from the physical and take it spiritual. Hallelujah. Okay, let's move, let's move, let's move. Now, the last verse that we'll be studying today is verse 14. And the grace of our Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, understand that. He didn't say the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the grace of God. He didn't say the grace of our of our of the Holy Spirit. And the communion and the, and the communion of God. No, 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 no. Everybody has his own role. They are one, and you cannot separate it. You cannot have this grace and be not be expressing the love. You cannot be expressing the love and not have the communion, the fellowship. When Psalm ninety one, we don't have enough time. But let me just say this. Jesus Christ is a carrier of the grace because he has gone through what you have gone through. He is one that empowers and enables you. Grace is an enablement. So when you cannot do something, you receive grace. So grace, if you have a laptop and you want to work on Microsoft Word, you engrace the laptop with a, with a app called Microsoft Office. So you are engracing it. So grace will allow you to do what you cannot do. So if you are struggling with sin, you need grace. Grace will not permit sin. Grace will give you power to walk over sin, to, 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 to live a life without sin. He says the love of God, and you know you guys have so much to say about this. So let me just give you grace for it. I just, you know, leave you guys. <laughs> the love of God. God, it was God's plan. It was not the plan of Jesus. It was God's plan to redeem man. Yes. It was God's plan to redeem us. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. So you cannot love if you don't understand God. You cannot receive this grace if you don't ask Jesus. You cannot receive this love if you don't understand God. And the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship. Brethren, fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let me explain this. Psalm 91, like someone said, he said Psalm 91 is the raving psalm now. He does thank God is raining. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody is saying it because it's good that we are saying it. So don't stop people from reciting Psalm 91. Whether they are saying it with their brain or with their heart. Of course. Encourage them. Praise the Lord because it's the word of God. Let the word of God trend. Okay. So say that. 
He said, talking about he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. When God told them to build the temple, He told them to build it in three layers, compartments. We have the outer place. We have the only place. Then we have the holies of holies. That holies of holies is the secret chamber. Now understand this. Whatsoever is not of sin cannot enter that place. Even at the, at the outer place, everybody comes with their sin. Even the devil comes. So if you are wondering how the devil approaches God, in God, God relates with him from the outer, at the outer place. When Job, when the devil came to meet Job, how could sin come in contact with purity? No, 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 purity, no. God was relating with him at the outer place. Now there is another place, the only place. These are the places where the priests enter. But not just, no, the Levites. Now we understand the Levites are different from the priests. The Levites are the tribe. The priests are those commissioned in the, in the lineage of Aaron. So, at those places, the Levites, they, some of them still have issues. So before they enter the Holy of Holies, they wash their hands. But nobody can access into the Holy of Holies, we say. Because it's a secret place. Anything that enters that place is safe. The devil can still get you when you're in the other place. When you're in the general holy, holy place, the devil can still put a seat, a wrong thought in your heart. So that you walk out come to the other place if you don't wash it off enough. If you don't renew your mind with the word of, word of God enough, the devil will entice you from the holy place. But when you're in the holy of holies, you're in the secret place. That's why any time the high priest enters that place, he sin, he dies. And that's the place. That's why when you are saying Psalm 91, are you in the secret place? You can't be coming with sin and be quoting Psalm 91 and saying those that are in the secret place. The secret place of the Lord is a place of purity. It's the holies of holies. And Jesus taught the veil. He made us ascend this holy holies of holies. It was only one high priest that could do it. At that time, it was only Jesus, our high priest, that could enter. But Jesus died for us and taught the veil and made us enter the holy place. The angels cannot enter this place. Oh! I remember so Alabama. What is man that you are mindful of? Or the son of man that you visited him? The angels don't have this kind of fellowship we have with God. They don't know God as Father. Understand this. If a slave wants to tell talk to a master, he's going to say, Sir, I'm finished washing the car. Can I go and eat now? If a child wants to say, Daddy, my daughter will tell you, I'm hungry. Well, well, I want to eat. He will tell you, can I go and take off? Can I go and take off? Can I take off? Can I take off? Yeah, no, he will tell her, no, he will tell her why. No. He will tell you why. Because it's a relationship, praise the Lord. Yeah. Are you in the secret place? Holies of holies. Are you in the only place? Because when you are here, coronavirus cannot have the middle of you. My brother, my brother. You guys, what do you guys have to say? Because do you know that any time Paul wants to end the letter, he ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot do anything on this. You cannot finish this Christian journey without grace. You cannot do it by your own power. You will fail. You have, I give my life to Christ. You will be giving your life to Christ every now and then. Because your life is not grace. Yes, you have believed, but you have not asked for grace. Grace and powers. You cannot live this life without the flame of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that is here with us now. Jesus has gone up. He said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will send the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the one that we can relate with now. When was the last time you related with the Holy Spirit? You have that power to relate. You have the relationship. Holy Spirit, what do you have for me today? When you wake up in the morning, you say, Holy Spirit, let us do it today. Holy Spirit, what do you have? What, what should I do today? Holy Spirit, how should I spend this morning? I'm going to do for something. So we have God, we have to spend this morning. But if you don't understand, you can flip. You'll get to it. Oh, Holy Spirit, what should I do? Holy Spirit, you know, in fellowship with Him. If you don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are not in the sacred place. Because the sacred place is a place of fellowship. And fellowship, you know, that's before. You have to say something. I think what you, what you expounded in that place was very, very important. Jesus, grace. God, love, the Holy Spirit, communion. May God open our eyes to this more in Jesus' name. Amen. We find grace in Jesus. Yeah. But we find love in God. It is love that we find in God. He that loveth not know it, not, if he that loveth not does not know God. Because love is, God is love. If, if, if 
look at the wretchedness of some of us. It takes love. I like that. So our wretchedness. It takes that love. love for God See, it takes it takes an overwhelming excess love. First it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Now worship is my way. This is how I find my If you are there with us, just let me begin to pray in the spirit. Ah, yeah, don't take, spirit. Don't, don't let the distance in there. There is no distance in the spirit. Yahweh, ah, pray, Tala, pray, Tala, pray, Tala, Baba, Son, Tala, pray, Kali, Ana, Baba, Son, Tele, 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 pray, Kali, Ana, we shall not lose anybody in this church. Yet I was sad when they break a land, they get a most of the land, they get a most of the land. Oh, we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. Brethren, coronavirus cannot stop us. It cannot stop Bible study. Because we'll be back again next week. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll be back again next week. We'll be back again next week because the Holy Spirit is at work in us. Thank you, Lord. He's at work in you. He's doing something new in you. Praise the Lord. You are blessed indeed. We commit you to the hands of a living God. The one that can keep you from all the pestilence ravaging. The one that can deliver you from the noisome pestilence. The Almighty God that can love and shower His grace on you. He even loves you already. He loves us already. And He desires for us to come into the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bring as many into your grace, into the grace of Jesus right now. And we pray, may every one of us begin to express the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We express the love of God, Amen. that Jesus died for us, and we come into the grace of Jesus. Amen. And we begin to express the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Brethren, see you next, next week. See you next week. If Jesus starts. Jesus starts. Hallelujah. But be victorious. Brethren, be victorious. Don't Praise forget, the Lord. you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the Spirit of God dwelleth inside of you.